we are Gato and Resurrección, and we are Charles' family, and we will talk about his life and his work. Fifty years ago, I was one of Dr. Frank's students, part of the London High School class of 1970. It was, uh, I should say, Dr. Frank was an, just an excellent teacher. He connected to students across generations, uh, across the multicultural dynamic that was uh, New London through the years. Uh, wonderful, uh, a wonderful person to have as uh, one of my teachers senior year. Eight years later, about eight years later, 1978, I joined the faculty in London High School and Dr. Frank was the department head of the social studies department and he was my immediate supervisor. Uh, we're on Whale Oil Row. Whale Oil Row was one of the areas that Dr. Frank and myself uh, came to and uh, we related the architecture to my uh, London and the Sea course and of course this is where those that made, uh, <clears throat> that made a very good living in the whale uh, whale oil industry, they built their houses along uh, this road and there's a few of them that survived Greek Revival architecture and again architecture was one of uh, Dr. Frank's favorite, uh, favorite pastimes. <laughs> was born in Norwich in 1928. He was the only son of uh, Charles Frink, who was from uh, Yantic and the uh, Franklin area, and Rose Beckley from Norwich. He was a war veteran. He was a survivor of um, a member of the Lost Battalion. Um, he had, at the time that Charles was born, he had a business, a dairy business in downtown Norwich. But um, Charles didn't know his father really because the father died from the injuries that he received in the war. He had, he had destroyed his lungs, the inhalation of mustard gas. And he died, uh, and the mother, Rose, uh, brought the son to her father's house in uh, Lincoln Avenue in Norwich. Uh, the father, uh, Thomas Beckley, was an, um, he had his own insurance business in, also in downtown Norwich. He was not a native of Connecticut. He was a native of Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, he was a direct relative of the uh, founder of Beckley, um, Alfred, Alfred Beckley. But he had come to Connecticut on business. He settled in Norwich and married um, Mary Ann Sheridan. She was a niece of Philip Sheridan, the commander from the Civil War. So uh, Charles and his mother lived in um, Lincoln Street for about 
uh, four years until Charles was five. And during that time, he was very well taken care of by the mother's family. There were two aunts who were school teachers. Uh, one of them, Elizabeth, was a very famous math teacher who taught middle school uh, math, seventh grade math, math for about 52 years in the same classroom. Uh, he was, uh, he learned how to draw quite well. Um, and also started um, doing some things with music. There was a piano in the living room, and he started uh, playing a little bit of music. But the, and the grandfather also took care of him. They did a lot of things, a lot of games. Um, the grandfather was a, the president of the Board of Education, and later on he became a city councillor. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of um, authority around Norwich and would take the grandson to many places, like to the train station uh, for the engineers to teach the kid how to drive a train, uh, cute things like this. Uh, at the age of five, the, when he was five, the mother met, remarried. and. Uh, that was not a, the grandfather did not like this uh, marriage because the new husband was Jewish and they were very Catholic. So the new family moved to New London to the house on Gardner Avenue, where Charles later on moved after he uh, finished college and had divorced twice. Um, and um, he, um, he lived in New London with um, the mother and the stepfather, and um, he was he he suffered from the loss of the his second father figure, who was grandfather. There was a a loss that he felt all, throughout all his life. But uh, in New London, he had a very good school, Harbor School, where he continued his musical activity. He had a ukulele, and the teacher loved uh, to invite him to play the ukulele for Friday afternoon uh, parties. Also, it became one of her tools for class management because when the class went wild, uh, she would say, okay, get the ukulele from the closet. He kept the, the ukulele in the, in the classroom closet. And he would entertain the kids, and everything will calm down. So the the director of the school, the principal, Stanley Hall, uh, saw that Charles had this musical ability and invited him to be part of the school band. Um, they need a, needed a flutist, and Charles was given the opportunity of learning uh, to play the flute with a, a, a good performer from the Coast Guard Band. So he learned quite well, and when this uh, um, Coast, Coast uh, Guard Band player could not teach him anymore, they both went every week to Boston. They took the train to uh, take lessons with... Um, with with a star, the star of the Boston Symphony, and that's how he became so you know so well trained in music, uh, starting from the very beginning. When he was about uh, thirteen, he joined a group that was forming at Connecticut College, sponsored by the business manager. It was called the Oratorio Society, and it was a community amateur um, music uh, group. And he was one of the flutists, and this is the group that later on became the Eastern Connecticut uh, Symphony Band. The other um, art form that he practiced since he was a little boy was drawing, and he became quite a good painter. 
he took lessons in all lines with one of the painters from the school of painting in all lines. And around the time that he started playing the flute, he realized that he had to make a choice. And he made a choice for music because um, it was uh, so much more satisfying to his interest in the human condition. Um, he was a child of the Depression, and although he lived well, he, he, the family was well off, he, he saw the suffering that went around, and he wanted to contribute something to the community that was important. Um, for him, music offered him the opportunity to provide um, harmonious, but also logical resolutions to intellectual and emotional needs. He, um, he graduated from uh, uh, Berkeley, Berkeley uh, High School with very good grades. And he decided to go to the Yale School of Music um, to pursue his, his uh, uh, musical career. He, he really wanted to become a professional musician within the, the American tradition of music. He knew London, the big thing for him was the beach. And uh, there was a very active uh, social life in the beach. There were a lot of family restaurants. There, there was a lot of uh, cards playing. The parents, both of them, played poker. But it was very social. There were, a, there, there, were, there were a lot of friends. There was a lot of music. The big bands came to, to play, uh, to, like uh, Duke Ellington. All these people came to the beach to play. And he became a very good swimmer. Uh, for him, the, the, the sea became like a, um, a symbol of freedom. And also, it was like a mother to him. day with no direction 